Hello everyone, Helder here. Uh, today I wanted to go over the Solo Stove. Uh, we picked one up, got it in a couple weeks ago. This weekend we put it through the paces out in the field and I wanted to share our findings uh, with our tribe. Great thing about this uh, stove, you don't need any specific uh, fuel source. All right, you can use everything that's organic that's laying around you on the ground, which is definitely a thumbs up, especially when we try to abide by a uh, leave no trace principle. All right, so super important. The other great thing is it's super weight, uh, super lightweight. Okay, so it's just this great piece of stainless steel, super lightweight, just pin it to the back of your pack, um, you're good to go, barely notice it on there. All right, so another great key feature that we're looking for. Uh, those of us that have spent a lot of time in the field and buying various uh, backpacks throughout the years, uh, backpack stoves uh, throughout the years, we always had to deal with all sorts of fuels and these fuels were stinky and they leaked and when you went to burn them and it gave you that disgusting smell, you know, right from the beginning, uh, when you're out there really just trying to get some peace of mind and get away from the city at least for those of us that are uh, That are located in metropolitan areas. All right, so when we go out there We want it to be a, a, a great of an experience as possible and that's why those stinky fuels uh, Not only are they not great for the environment. They're really not great for us uh, both through an experience and uh, both through health reasons All right, so another great thing because we're using utilizing what we find on the ground um, which is excellent, okay? Now that brings me to the next point. Just because we have these stoves, the principles of fire building do not change uh, because we're adding a, a, a little bit of technology, all right? You're still going to need fuel, you're still gonna need a spark, okay? And you're still gonna need oxygen. So keep that in mind. Nothing really changes because we spent some money on a new tool. Doesn't matter how great this tool is. So keep in mind those principles uh, because I see a lot of people out there that just think because they have this little piece that nothing else matters Just throw a bunch of stuff in there and let's see what happens and most likely it's gonna work because of the engineering that we have in there But it's also not gonna be the most effective. You're gonna take a lot longer. You're gonna burn a lot more fuel All right, and we're looking to be uh, to be smart about what we do here uh, And not just uh, have a piece of technology that we're just gonna you know have there and take the easy way out because when things get taken away from us and uh, we can't utilize all the fancy stuff. We still got to go back to the basics. So hammer in those basics, practice them as much as you can. Something that I'm always uh, harping on within the Natural Training Center method uh, to our tribe, okay, our members. And when I get the chance and it's not an emergency, all right, I'm going to go ahead and try to utilize the most minimalist approach I, I can. What does that do? That hammers in my skills, all right? I know that I can always get it started with the other stuff, all right, but what happens when one day if I don't have that other stuff on me and now I don't have a bunch of practice? Uh, also, a lot of times when we're reviewing this stuff, we have all optimal conditions, right? So it's a beautiful day, everything that we're lighting is dry, uh, very minimal wind, all right? So you, you add in any of those other factors, the experience is going to be completely different. That's why I really harp on uh, building a fire the way you would build a fire in the open ground, all right? Much smaller scale, but keep that practice in, keep that mythology in there, and uh, you're going to get a lot better uh, practice and uh, skill development out of your experience, all right? So keeping that in mind. Trying to alleviate the fire starters for now. Now keep in mind, if I am out there and I'm having trouble starting a fire, first thing I'm reaching for are those fire starters, all right? Because I know I have them on me. If I'm in a hurry, I'm reaching for those fire starters. So I'm not trying to be a hypocrite here, not trying to say, hey, no, we're gonna just have the minimalist approach. It's just when you can, practice it. And then if it doesn't work and you're thirsty or you're hungry, whatever the case may be, then reach for what you have in, in your pocket, all right? Or, or up your sleeve, so to speak. So keeping that in mind, basics of fire building, all right? Tinder, kindling, fuel. Now this is a much smaller uh, version of tinder kindling and fuel because we're working on a little mini stove here, a little backpacking stove. Obviously the fuel, if I'm building an open fire, is gonna be as thick as my forearm, right? And so on, but for the purposes of this, we wanna have it already staged because we don't wanna do things backwards and start our fire and then run away from it. First of all, we're not really manning the fire. This is the kind of stuff a little amber can fly away, catch fire somewhere, especially in state forests, things like that. We don't want that to happen. We need to be smart. Uh, we're getting so much land taken away from us as it is. You know, the last thing that we need to do is give them excuses of why they're taking away our, our, our public land uh, for us to have our, our fun uh, in, all right? But we'll save that for another video. No politics here. So, tinder, kindling, fuel, appropriate size, for what you're utilizing. Okay, so what's cool about the stove is the way that it's configured, all right, for all the guru engineers out there, you'll be uh, much better to answer this than me, but they call it gasification, okay, because just the way that everything's channeled in here and engineered with the ear holes and things like that, uh, it just really takes the intensity, I guess, of the gases that the fire is given, condenses it, which makes it uh, a lot easier, obviously, for your fuel source to burn. So you can tell here, guys, everything was just basically uh, organic stuff that we had lying around, okay, uh, got lucky, lit it on one match, all right, um, and like everything else, do it the right way, get your practice in, all right? Now it's not stinky, all right? I'm smelling what I want to smell, you know, nature, you know, or nature burning, which doesn't sound right, but 
you know, it's, it's a natural smell. It's not a gassy smell. It doesn't feel like I'm on my barbecue uh, with uh, propane gas and things like that. Because, you know, let's face it, we're out there. Uh, we could have a minimalist approach. We could have a survival approach and whatever the case may be. But the basics are the, are the basics. Adding the thicker, thicker stuff. Now, as soon as this fuel starts to catch, then we're pretty much good to go, all right? We have this little uh, pot holder or lid that we put on here. So we fix it right to the top and then whatever we're going to boil would go right on top of this, all right? So it's a little bit of a shelf holder lid. I'm sure there's a better name for that, but uh, I'm sure some of you will comment below and let me know. All right, so we're adding some fuel here still. All right, so we'll let this burn. You can tell it has a heck of a flame going on right now. Almost a little bit too high where I can't even uh, work on it. So you can tell this, it's a, it's a heck of a piece of engineering. Just don't forget the basics, okay? By utilizing the basics and going through the motion, you're gonna have success. All right, so we'll go ahead, add this little lid now. And what we could do is start boiling our water for some tea that we're gonna make. Okay. It's an old canteen cup that I've had from my days in the Marines. Putting that on here. Now you can tell there is a little bit of a, an opening here, and that's where we're gonna continue to feed our fuel until we get our meal cooked or water boiled or whatever your goal is. All right, so there is a little bit of an opening here. Okay, as you can tell, it's a couple minutes later. We kind of went through all of our uh, little fuel stores, sources that we had staged here, which is pretty good because it was the pretty much the exact amount that we needed to get our water to a boil so that we could go ahead and make some of our tea. All right, leave it in there a little bit to steep. You can tell what the inside of the uh, solo stove looks like. Right now, what we're going to do is... Uh, let the rest of that, the wood that's in there basically burn, turn into ashes another couple minutes or so, and then we just, uh, we'll be good to go. All right, Drive, that's basically it as far as our presentation. Our tea is ready, all right, so we're ready for our high tea. And uh, I really can't say enough about the stove. It's, it's something great, it's something that I wish was invented many years ago. It would have saved me a lot of anguish, aggravation, as well as money. Um, super lightweight. The fact that it's leave no trace and minimalist is, is right up our alley, especially especially within the NTC method. Um, other great points about it, uh, being able to just, the durability of it, all right, you can just clip it outside of your pack so it doesn't even have to take room inside uh, while you're on a uh, trek or uh, anything, backpacking, whatever the case may be. If it's part of your survival gear that you're just keeping in one of your bags or whatever, just excellent because you don't have to worry about fuel evaporating or, or uh, going bad if it's some type of two cycle or having to find kerosene, uh, gasoline we've used in the past on certain stoves. So uh, you know you see a lot throughout the years and then when you get a product like this it's very exciting. So if you get a chance and you have the opportunity uh, go ahead and uh, pick up a solo stove. Remember excellent way to, to uh, practice your fire building basics but at the same time it doesn't replace your fire building basic skills. Use this product to enhance your skills, not to replace your skills. All right, thank you very much. Helder from Natural Training Center. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope that you found it useful. Now get out there and play.